let's build a rubric. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you have to have an assignment so that you can attach the rubric to it. Um, I have this assignment here that I needs a rubric. So I'm going to go in and create one for it. So this is an assignment where students have to create a skit using the three types of rhetorical appeals, ethos, pathos, and logos, and they're doing it with a group. So I want to make sure that I'm grading them fairly, so I need to have a rubric. So once you have your assignment in, you can scroll down and you're going to see this button that says plus rubric. And the first thing you're going to do is give it a title. So I'm going to title this rhetoric skits rubric because really I want it to match the name of my assignment so I can find it later. And you'll notice you have some different options. You have criteria, you have ratings, you have points, and then you have all these options down here. Criteria are going to be the things that you are grading your students on. So for instance, did they write in complete sentences? Did they get the correct answers? Did they explain their answers? Anything that you want to grade them on needs to go here. So for this, I'm going to go up to my assignment and I'm going to say, okay, what do I need to grade them on? Well, the big thing is going to be that they have the three types of rhetoric in their skit. You're going to click this pencil button and where it says description of criterion, you're going to need to write something. So I'm going to say correct usage of ethos and then say update and you'll see it changes it here. And then I'm going to need to do ratings as in, um, a scale and then how many points however I like to put in all my criteria I want to grade on first before I start doing points because like if you have four criteria then and it's a hundred points you know they each need to be about 25 so to add a new one you're gonna click plus criterion new criterion and then I'm gonna do correct I can spell usage of pathos and then I'm going to do it again and say correct usage of logos and then I need to think what are the other things that I need to grade them on I need to grade them on that they have labeled rhetorical appeals labeled I'm going to also add in that there is a conclusion to conclusion to the skit because a lot of them don't really give a good ending. So now I have five different criteria that I'm going to grade them on. So then you can start playing with, um, I would suggest you play with the points before you start playing with the ratings. And here's something to keep in mind for the points. So right now, notice that my total points is 25. But up here, I've set the points for the assignment as 100. You need to make sure that these two numbers match. So I'm going to say, okay, how many points do I want this to be? Well, these top three things are the most important things to me. So I may be going to say 25, 25, 25. And you'll see this automatically updates. So now I've got 85 points on here because it automatically does five. So 75, and then you have to kind of do some calculating. And that's still not enough. Now I have 100. So I can say this is really, even though it's important, it's kind of the least important thing for me. So it's going to be a lesser amount of points. Then you can start playing with these ratings. So if they get full marks, it's going to be 25 points. If they get no marks, it's going to be seven. So you can also add things in between and you can edit what it says here. So for instance, if it says correct usage of ethos, um, I maybe put correct. Because if it's correct, they're going to get 25 points. 
Okay, and then I'm going to give them zero points if they do not attempt. So, like, if they don't use it at all, they get zero points. And then I need to add one in the middle because we know not all of them are going to be correct. Um, so I'm going to hit this blue plus sign and it's going to automatically pop up. It's going to say 13 points because it's going to split it in half. And now I'm going to say incorrect but attempted. So like even if they're wrong, they're going to get some kind of points. And I'm just going to go down... If I was intelligent, I would copy and paste this. <laughs> Oop, that's another one. Okay, so I've got this done now. Now, I could add in one in between. You see it there? Or in between here. So really, this allows you to make very detailed and specific rubrics if you want to. Now, I've got to deal with these. So this one says they're labeled. So I'm say all. I guess I can just say labeled. I can say not labeled. So that one's an easy one. And then the conclusion to the skit, I'm gonna say has clear conclusion. Has no conclusion and then in the middle I'm going to add as unclear conclusion and really I like to use wordage I guess the word is verbiage that students are going to understand because they're going to be looking at this rubric too so then you have some options I'm done with my rubric and I know my points match because I just checked that so now I'm going to come down and you can use any of these options. You can freeform write comments. You can take off the points, um, which could be helpful if like an assignment wasn't graded. You could, if you use outcomes, you can say that you don't want it to post them. I always check this one because I am going to use this rubric for assignment grading. And then this one says you can hide the score, which I think is weird. Why would you use a rubric if you're going to hide it? So I'm going to check this one because I am going to use it for grading. And I'm going to say update. So here's what my rubric looks like. If I decide later on I need to go in and change it, I can just hit this little button here. I can also delete it. And I can search for other rubrics that I've made because um, I may use a similar rubric. I may need a rubric like this in the future, and I can just use this one, make a copy of it, edit it, and we're good to go. The reason these rubrics are super important is not just because it normalizes your grading across the board, but because if I came over here to speed grader and I was grading a student, student's assignment, I'm going to actually be able to click, 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 click as I'm grading, and it will automatically calculate the points for me. I'm in my sandbox right now, which is the reason why I can't actually click on that. So let me come out of there and show you what that would look like. Okay, so now I am in an actual class, so you can see what this looks like. This is a different assignment. But when I pull up the student, you see how it says view rubric? So I can click on that and now my rubric that I have created comes up and when the student's work is here, I can say, okay, they had really thoughtful answers. Mm, they did okay with complete sentences, but they still have some work to do. They also have some work to do with capital letters and periods. But overall, I can tell that they're an expert in understanding inference. And as I click, click, clicked, notice the points happened. It totaled it up and now if I hit save it's going to automatically throw that grade into here for me as a percentage this makes grading so much faster it obviously takes a little bit of time to build this rubric but as you can see this rubric is pretty generic and I could use it for a lot of different things and that is why you should build rubrics in canvas and use them with your speed grader